passing Dalhwini. Only a few trains stop at Dalhwini, but if you keep looking to the east, you'll glimpse the whitewashed buildings and copper-topped kilns of the whisky distillery. Around you is the open strath of Glentruam, its river meandering northwards on its way to the Spey. Malt whisky. It's one of Scotland's most famous exports, and it's been produced right here in Dalhwini since 1897. But what made this such a perfect spot to build a whisky distillery? You might think it's the pure mountain water flowing from Lochan and Dara the small lake of the green meadow, high in the hills to the west. And of course you'd be right. The plentiful water rushes and sparkles over the peat, both essential ingredients in the production of malt whisky. But just as important as this natural resource is the railway line on which you're travelling today. Only with the coming of the railways could other essential ingredients be brought in, like barley for malting, coke to fire the kilns, and empty barrels waiting to be filled. Today, the kilns are no longer used, but the work of the distillery is still a carefully guarded craft. Sarah Burgess has worked in various distilleries, but only shares a little of her knowledge here. We have a double distillation process. So first of all, the wash, which is like a strong beer that we've made in the fermentation process, we take that through our first distillation. The second distillation is exactly the same as the first, with the boiling, the vapours rising up the still, condensing in our worm tub, and the vapours returning to liquid and coming through in the spirit safe. This time, however, the liquid is divided into three parts. We have, romantically, the head, the heart and the tail. And from a distiller's point of view, they would call that the foreshot, the middle cut and the feints. So it's the middle cut, or the heart, that goes to cask and matures there for 12 years. But every distillery will have a different age that's right for their particular whisky. The part of the process that's most impressive for me and it's just about how it actually looks as you walk through the distillery is the still house always very very different the shape the size of the stills the heat the smell it's absolutely amazing for me the still house is where the magic happens Although pre-prepared malted barley as well as the distilled whisky are transported by road, the fresh flowing water keeps the distillery at Dalhwini. So the Gaelic name for whisky has an added value for those working here. Ushkebeha means the water of life. Scotland has over 120 distilleries and 40% of them lie along the River Spey. Most are downriver from here, nearer to the barley fields. Scottish distilleries also produce blends, which are a mixture of malt and grain whiskies. Together they're vital to Scotland's economy, accounting for over £4 billion a year, or almost 20% of all Scottish exports. People across the globe, from the USA to France, and in the growing markets of China and Latin America, savour the taste and aroma of Speyside malt whisky, which has been produced in distilleries like Dalhwini. But not all malt whisky is exported. Many Scots also enjoy a dram of the amber liquor, knowing it is made from homegrown natural ingredients. Whether at a party or a more sombre gathering, raising a glass to friends here and abroad is a truly Scottish toast, which Liz Lochhead, the Scots macker, has recently expressed anew. And if freedom and whisky gang together, how do you like your freedom? Swallowed neat? Distillations of history, language, weather. In a uskuba or barley, burn water, peat.